Greetings, this is Paul the Poke from paulthepoke.com. Today's topic we have this week in prophecy. We're going to take a look at uh, the events pertaining to biblical prophecy that have occurred over the last week. Uh, we're going to start in Europe. Specifically, we're going to take a look at Ezekiel 38 and 39. Uh, Gog of Magog. Our interest is in Magog. That would be modern-day Russia. Specifically, we're going to be looking at the Baltic Sea, essentially from St. Peter's on down into Germany, which takes us to Nord Stream 1. Nord Stream 1 is the natural gas pipeline uh, that goes from Russia to Germany. And Gazprom, that would be Russia's um, energy company, uh, they said they were due to resume gas delivery to Germany <clears throat> yesterday. However, that has been suspended indefinitely. And this is uh, the major pipeline that distributes natural gas from Russia to Europe. Um, and no time frame, by the way, for when we're going to reopen this. And I'm of the opinion this is in response. The move came hours after the G7 countries agreed to impose a price cap on Russian oil in an attempt to stem the flow of funds to Vladimir Putin's regime. Well, Vlad says, fine, you want to cap the cost of oil and gas? You don't get no oil and gas, Europe. Um, and this will not be started uh, delivery of oil and gas until, uh, repairs were fully implemented. Okay. And again, this is the biggest pipeline for gas from Russia to Europe, 55 billion cubic meters of gas per year. Um, they're going to have problems in a statement from telegram on telegram. Gazprom said gas transportation to the Nord stream gas pipeline has been completely halted until the com Complaints on the operation of the equipment have been eliminated. So apparently we're having some distribution complaints, some malfunctions, key turbine, whatever. Uh, just to give you guys an idea, this is how oil, or I'm sorry, this is how gas um, goes to Europe. And here's the Nord Stream in the north. This is the primary uh, line of gas. You got the Northern Lights, Yamal Europe. Progress, Soyuz, Turk Stream. This is how Russia delivers gas to Europe. And I also think uh, France was being cut out of a bunch of gas distributions as well. But the bottom line is Russia's going to squeeze Europe. Um, and it's not really any more complicated than that. And because of these types of things, this is driving the price of natural gas and electricity sky high across Europe. And they are worried about having enough gas to survive the winter. Uh, you know, if just a normal winter, they might make it through two months of the winter with gas supplies and electricity supplies from what I'm reading. All kinds of stories about how Europe is taking in gas. I know we're shipping some liquefied natural gas uh, from the United States to Europe. There are also some reports that Russia is selling natural gas to China, and China is essentially shipping that stuff halfway around uh, the world, swinging out from China, out in, into the Pacific. Oh, gosh, through the Red Sea, or I'm sorry, through uh, through the Suez Canal, or even down all the way around the the southern part of, South, of, of Africa, and then bringing it back up around to Europe. I mean, there are all kinds of stories out there as to how Europe is getting natural gas. Now, they're just paying through the nose, you know, anywhere from 10 to 14 times higher for electricity than what they paid a year ago. So um, they're going to have a cold winter, and it's really not any more complicated than that. Um, if you guys want to read that, I will provide uh, links to all of these articles, and this is at theguardian.com. Now, as a result of having their oil being cut off, uh, this is from oilprice.com, 
world's second largest steel maker, closes European plant. And uh, this is in Germany. Bremen, Germany. Uh, they're closing down, I'm not sure how to say this, Archler Metal uh, at the end of September until further notice due to exorbitant rise in energy prices. Well, and think about how that's going to affect uh, construction prices around the planet. Uh, we're going to have a shortage of steel, which is, again, limited supply is going to drive the price higher. So cost of steel is going up because we don't have as much uh, production of steel. Uh, and this is the second largest steel maker on, in the planet, on the planet. And you're going to see the price of steel go up, which is going to affect construction costs. Um, giant steel giant also cited weak market demand and negative economic outlook and persistently high CO2 costs in steel production as reasons for its decision. Uh, high gas and electricity costs are putting a, a heavy strain on competitiveness. On top of that, from October onwards, there will be the German government's planned gas levy, which will further burden us. There's nothing looking good taking place in Europe. Um, called on politicians to urgently take action to get energy prices under control. It's like, why are you counting on politicians to solve anything? But that's what they're saying anyhow, like they're going to have any kind of uh, effect on gas prices, electricity prices. There's one person who's controlling that, and that would be one Vladimir Putin in Russia. And he is driving the bus. Don't kid yourself. Um, and we're going to shift from, well, we're still going to talk about Russia, but we're going to transition a little bit to Revelation 9, specifically Revelation 9, verse 16. And I got all these different versions here, and this is from BibleHub.com. Anything from the NIV, the New Living Translation. I want to focus on uh, Revelation 9 and the 200 million uh, army mounted troops, or their number. ESV says twice 10,000 times 10,000, or 2 million, 200 million. Berean Study Bible, 200 million. King James, uh, we do some math. 200 million, New King James, 200 million. King James Bible, 200,000, thousand. You get the point. 200 million is the size of this army. Which brings us to something that is, this is currently taking place as we speak. Vostok 2022 military maneuvers will be held September 1st through the 7th with forces from Russia, China, Syria, India, Nicaragua, and elsewhere. Now the focus, the thing I'm, you know, looking at this from a prophetic standpoint, and we're looking at a 200 million man army. Uh, one, it's concerning that you have Russia and China on the same page and holding, holding military exercises together, but prophetically to come up with an army of 200 million people, you have China and India, you know, historically nasty enemies. They've been scraping at each other over in the Himalayas on their border currently, but you now have these two at the same military drill. China and India. So you're looking at roughly, what, 3.6 billion people, uh, population of these two countries, almost comfortably 40% of the population of the planet, if not close to half of the people of the planet. So, you know, let's just, you know, for the sake of round numbers, 3.6 billion to 4 billion people, you have no problem getting to a 200 million man army. That would be, that'd be 5% of those two populations. Loosely, loosely, you know, just for the sake of math, 4 billion, 10% of that's 400 million, cut that in half and you're at 200 million. So 5% of the population of China and India, if working together would get you to 200 million. Now you could do the same thing with each one of those um, countries as well. You know, if you're close to two, 
two billion at each place, and they're roughly at one point eight. But you know that'd be ten percent of China's population. But you combine the two, and you get five percent of their populations to get two hundred million. So that's a that's a variable I would not have thought about. China and India joining forces to create Revelation 9's 200 million man army. I don't know what the future holds on that, and it may be a collection of countries, but it is interesting to see that we have Russia and China on the same page, and we're going to add India into the fold. Also, we want to take a look at these com- these these three countries from a economic standpoint as part of the BRICS countries. Uh, throw in Brazil, R is for Russia. I is for India, C is for China, S is for South Africa. Now, these these countries together are working on a basket of currencies to uh, to allow for the economic commerce, transactions and economic commerce around the world. And their, their point is real simple. They want to get away from the dollar-denominated currency that pretty much is ruling economics around the world. They want to, they want to supplant the dollar away from um, being the reserve currency. And I'm going to jump ahead. and I'm going to skip over here to Egypt, move this one. Uh, and we're seeing some of this happening now. Egypt to issue bonds in China's currency, the yuan. And again, things are changing. Now, this, this transaction in and of itself is not going to cause the dollar to lose its reserve st- uh, status around the, around the planet. But it is losing its dominance in the Middle East due to China moving in. And China, or Egypt, is willing to issue bonds denominated in the yuan, or China's currency. And it will be to the equivalent of $1.5 to $2 billion worth of yuan-denominated bonds. So instead of this transaction taking place in dollars, Egypt's reaching out to China and financing debt through China instead of the United States. Um, and part of that, you can understand why part of this is taking place. Um, and this is going on around the Middle East. Uh, people are fed up with the United States and how they're manipulating the dollar. And, and that dovetails into, to what we're seeing now with our federal reserve. Uh, and this is starting in September, you know, just as a quick, this is from Hedgeye, um, dot com this is keith mccullough's uh company josh steiner he's an analyst and it's just a simple look at um you know over the last three months qualitative you know the the fed is tightening or taking money out of the system and from what over the last three months they took out roughly 52 billion dollars so you're pulling money out of the system dollars out of the system which is causing the value of the dollar to get stronger It's also raising interest rates. And as a result, all that money that has been loaned out in dollars is now costing more in higher interest rates to pay back. So, you know, Uncle Sam is calling. He wants to be paid his money back. And interest rates are going up and higher. So it's costing more to finance that debt in dollars. And so you can see why countries like Egypt or countries across the Middle East are saying, you know what? let's take our business elsewhere and let's go to China. I mean, we are watching things change rapidly economically. And as a result, China's yuan is uh, becoming cheaper relative to the dollar. And uh, heaven forbid the, the People's Republic over there in China decide to devalue their currency. We wake up one. I mean, there's all kinds of things that can happen. We could wake up one morning. The yuan has been devalued against the dollar. We could wake up. Saudi Arabia could decide to start making transactions of oil in the yuan instead of the dollar. We are on a slippery little slope. And the bottom line is what that means in any of these cases. Uh, You know, going back to, Hedgeye's comments, <clears throat> Steiner's comments from Hedgeye, you know, starting in, in September, September through the rest of the year, you know, we had seen uh, a drawdown of $52 billion over the previous three months. Looking at the next four months, you know, there's going to be tightening to the tune of $380 billion. 
450 basis points or four and a half percent, when you know what that's going to do to the stock market, stock market's going down and it's not any more complicated than that. And I don't care what any storytelling is taking place or what some talking head on TV is telling you. If history is any indication, you can look at this. This is the fourth time it's happened since what, 2010? Stock market goes down. It's not complicated. And he asks the question, are you still feeling bullish? Well, not, not so much. Um, so you can, you can see where, where things are being affected and you have countries like Russia, China, India coming together in a military sense, you know, and that speaks of revelation nine and the 200 million man army. We know that there's a global currency coming at some point in the future how and when that happens, we don't know, but people are tired of a dollar denominated world and want to reset. Uh, economic ties are being redrawn. Interesting times, as the Chinese would say, uh, which takes us to our favorite, Recep Erdogan out of Turkey. This is from Al Arabia News. And again, we care about Turkey because of... Uh, Ezekiel 38, Meshach, Tubal, Bethagarma, and Gomer, all ancient names of people, um, Noah's grandkids, great grandkids in one case of Gomer, coming out of, um, coming out of the ark. They settled in what is, quote, modern day Turkey. Um, and now he's threatening warning Greece over Aegean airspace violations. Um, and the reason I pulled this article, you guys will see here in just a second, but he's, he's warning this was yesterday. Greece would pay a heavy price if it continued to harass Turkish planes over the Aegean Sea. Hey, Greece, take a look at history. If you go further, you will pay a heavy price. Erdogan told a rally at the Black Sea in the Black Sea region. Um, and the money quote was down here. Uh, we have only one word to tell Greece. Do not forget Izmir. Well, that would be ancient. That's ancient Smyrna, Smyrna in Greek, referring to the end of the Greek occupation after Turkish forces entered the city in the Aegean coast in 1922. Your occupation of the islands does not bind us. Greek runs Greece runs those islands, or they have recently. And when the time comes, we will do what's necessary. As we say, we may come suddenly one night, uh, just like be on your toes, because here we come. Lo you know, when he talked about launching an operation into Syria, well, they've done that. They're moving into northern Syria. And that's what he does is he, he always goes and historically has picked on the Kurds when he wants to start some trouble, he being Erdogan. Well, this, this is different in the sense that both Greece and Turkey are supposed to be NATO countries. So we would, you know, is this, is this an attempt to split NATO? I don't know the answer to that, but I'm sure that's part of his calculus. And he's got, you know, a foot out of NATO and he's, he is aligning, he being Erdogan, Turkey is aligning every day more with Russia and friends. And so we'll take a look at, We'll close with uh, Revelation 2, verse 8, part A, and to the angel of the church in Smyrna, right? Um, in ancient Smyrna, again, today that's Izmir, Turkey. It's about 35 miles north of Ephesus. Smyrna was founded by the Greeks approximately 3,000 years ago. Again, and the Greeks were the ones who built what is ancient Smyrna, modern-day Izmir. Rebuilt by Alexander the Great, again, another Greek, in 340 B.C. And then the Romans were given control of the city, 133 B.C. As part of uh, Eumenes III's will and testament. Um, Port City relied on commercial trade. Polycarp, uh, Christian, was the bishop of Smyrna, killed in 155 A.D., became a territory in the eastern leg of the Roman Empire. city was destroyed by an earthquake in 178 A.D. 
and eventually Smyrna became part of the Ottoman Empire in the 15th century. Uh, today, Izmir is the most populi- populous Aegean port city in Turkey, predominantly Muslim, third most populous city in Turkey, also home to Turkey's second largest Jewish community of about 2,500 people. So again, all these things that are taking place in our world have some sort of uh, biblical reference to them. And isn't that fascinating, which would only lead you to believe that, you know, we got to be getting close to the return of Jesus. So, and that's kind of the focus for those of you new to this, this blog and website and uh, postings. I believe Jesus is coming back and I believe it's getting closer and closer every single day. And if we look at the world around us and we look at the words of Jesus himself, we look at the ancient prophets, we look at the book of revelation. It's just screaming. He's got to be close. So, and who knows? Only he knows. Only the Father knows. And but all these, all these things, all these ancient groups of people. When you overlay a modern day map over where these ancient people settled, and look at a modern day map, they are lining up prophetically with what the Bible has to say. So appreciate you guys taking the time to uh, follow along. Uh, for those of you who are new to PaulThePoke.com, you can subscribe. Type your email name or your email address in right here. Email address, hit subscribe. You receive a notification every time we put something out. Here are the categories and topics of the blog. If any of these are interesting, we've got articles and posts going back 12 years now. Uh, We have guest authors who provide things uh, on a weekly basis. And... um, all of these different topics. And again, we're, there are some Bible studies embedded in this as well, different topical things. So I appreciate you guys taking the time to follow along and uh, we'll be talking with you. We got the fall feasts coming up. I suspect things will be ratcheting up from a geopolitical standpoint. And we will review the fall feasts probably starting oh in a couple of weeks, do an overview, and then we'll take a look at Yom Teruah. Uh, Rosh Hashanah, their synonymous Feast of Trumpets, Day of Atonement, and Tabernacles. So we got the three fall feasts coming up at the end of September. Wishing you guys the best. Have a good one. Take care. Bye.